Hello, my name is Wendy Rodrigue. Uh, today I'm going to share with you about George Rodrigue's great painting, Dog in a Box. Um, George is my late husband. We were married from 1997 until he passed away in 2013. And I love sharing his work with others. And it's really my life's work. I've been doing this for about 30 years now. So it's great to be able to share with you through this video medium um, during these difficult times for the world. So today we're going to talk about um, primarily Dog in a Box, which was painted in 1989. Um, it is oil on canvas, traditional oil on canvas, and we're going to contrast it a little bit with a couple other paintings. I just want to show you these since they're hanging in the vicinity. Uh, one is this painting which was painted in 2010. This is acrylic on canvas. On the back of it, it says, Happy Birthday, Wendy, which is really funny because uh, my birthday's in March and George gave it to me on Halloween. Um, I actually had crawled into bed and pulled back the covers thinking he was there uh, to give him a goodnight kiss and there was the painting instead. Um, but we'll talk more in detail about that one another time. And then this one is called Joe's Lost Boat. And this painting is what we call water-based oil on canvas. Uh, water-based oil is a medium that George discovered. It had been around, uh, presumably, but he discovered it in the early 2000s. Was very excited about it because um, illness had prevented him from painting in oils for many years. It allowed him to return to that really lush medium. Although by that time, he actually said that he preferred painting in acrylic paint. So uh, very interesting, I think, to contrast that we've got 1989 oil on canvas, 2010 acrylic on canvas, 2009 water-based oil on canvas. These paintings, these paintings were painted around the same time, right about the same time, and 20 years after this one. But you can still tell they're Rodri, can't you? And yet they're extremely different. Uh, extremely different. A lot of people think that when George started painting the blue dog that he abandoned his cage and subject matter. Not true. He just evolved and painted things in other ways. And I hope that you can see, even in this brief contrast here, which we'll go into more detail another time, um, the real differences in these landscapes, right? And the real differences in these dogs even beyond their colors. Um, what's similar between the three? They're all painted by Rodrigue, and they're all made up. He fabricated these scenes out of his mind. Uh, George's imagination, your imagination, uh, it's an incredibly wonderful thing, can transport us to another place. Um, also, I would say about Dog in a Box, before I'm gonna do a little reading for you, uh, painted in 1989 makes it one of the earliest blue dog paintings. The very first blue dog painting was in 1984. Um, we're going to talk about that one on another time. Um, but there were only about a dozen done between that one and this one. And they were all in this Lugaru style, which means werewolf. A story his mother told him as a child. Very ghostly, um, very wolfy looking. And um, it was about a year, year and a half after he painted this, that George painted his most pivotal work, the work he considered to be the true beginning of the Blue Dog series. And surprise, it's actually hanging right here in the house. Follow me. Lou Garou, 1991, a powerhouse painting. And it is one of those paintings that you just have to run up to and have a conversation with it. But again, another time. That's a whole visit. Just look up. So today, I thought we'd talk a little bit about books with regards to this painting. Um, first of all, this book is, this painting has been in a number of Rodri books, but most interestingly, it's in this book, which is the very first book on the Blue Dog series. And guess what? Was it published in Louisiana? No, it wasn't even published in the U.S. It was published in Germany by a publisher called uh, 2001, and, which means 2001. It was published, though, in 1992, Der Blaue Hund, 
means the blue dog. Um, this publisher, it's 5,000 Eyes, was really well known for incredible reproductions, and that's why this is the book I chose to share with you that, um, that features this painting, because this is really a beautiful, beautiful printing job, really its own lithograph, and yet look how different it is from the original painting. Very hard to transfer original art into printed form. Yeah, Germany, Der Blaue Hund. Now the reading I'm gonna do for you today is just a short one. Um, this is the book, The Other Side of the Painting. Um, I wrote this book over the course of four years. It was the idea of the University of Louisiana Press, which is UL Press at uh, UL, the University of Louisiana at Lafayette in Lafayette, Louisiana. And George was very, very excited about it. I worked on it for four years. It really should be both our names on the cover. It was him that insisted it would just be my name. It's full of his quotes. I followed him around constantly with a notebook. You're gonna hear some of those in just a moment. Um, he also came up with uh, the title. George said that I was the other side of his hit record. And so he called the book The Other Side of the Painting. He put a painting on here that he did in college, the Art Center College of Design, superimposed the blue dog on it and then put the back of it here. We can talk about that another time too. It's pretty great. He came up with the, not only the title, the cover, the design, um, everything about this book, also the type, face and side, and what images were chosen. He did the end papers. Um, George's book as much as mine, truly. The essay I'm gonna share with you from this book, um, and the book, by the way, is based on my blog, partly on my blog, Musings of an Artist's Wife, which I discontinued recently because I'm doing more, more things with um, the Life and Legacy Foundation, but it's still there, so you can reference it for all kinds of history on Rodri paintings. And the book has a lot of those essays woven together, and then I rewrote them somewhat for the book, so this is one of those. It was written in June of 2012, about six weeks after George's cancer diagnosis. We were in Houston by that time, and had been for six weeks or more, where George was receiving treatments. Um, you know, it kind of echoes a lot of what's going on in the world today, these sorts of unexpected situations. Um, kind of throws us all off. Um, two other things about the essay that apply today. Um, is one, I'm in my yoga clothes. I was gonna get dressed up to do this. Um, very rare, any of us get, a lot of us get dressed today unless you're some of our fabulous healthcare workers. Thank you, folks. Um, and the others that keep, keep our wonderful our government, everyone who keeps the world moving along. Um, anyway, many of us are spending our time in our pajamas, or our exercise clothes. I get up in the morning and practice yoga stay in those clothes. Today I am wearing yoga clothes by a friend of mine made by Ellen McComer in New Orleans. If you've ever been to the restaurant Justine Nola, uh, she did the wonderful murals in the back there. She actually hand sewed this little wrap. Love this. And I'm wearing a pin. I don't know if you can see that, but it's um, all sterling silver. This was made by my husband, Douglas Magnus. Very accomplished silversmith, also very accomplished videographer who's helping me out today. Thank you, Douglas. And he made it in the style of Alexander Calder, um, who made the famous OK pin that George O'Keefe often wore around her neck, all from one piece of silver. And the one other thing I would mention is that in the essay, I'm gonna talk about um, George's struggle with polio. George had polio as a child, polio demic. Uh, ties in here. This is called Dog in a Box. <laughs> Dog in a Box. In yoga, I spent years within our bedroom practicing tree pose, standing on one leg, arms stretching skyward until I balanced with ease. Yet at my first attempt outside, at the edge of our patio in Carmel Valley, California, I fell. Breaking my own rule, I donned my glasses, focusing on a distant tree and tried once more, teetering a few seconds before falling again. Obviously, although I never touched them, the four walls and ceiling of our house supported me psychologically during hundreds of tree poses, as though imaginary beams pressed and stabilized with energy from every angle. It was easy to reach for heaven, 
reach for heaven when it extended past the ceiling, buttressed by the walls of a residential box. But outside, the sky left me reeling and unsteady, both on my feet and inside my head, as I struggled for focus within, ironically, the freedom of a wide open space. The earliest Blue Dog paintings of the late 1980s and early 1990s referenced, without exception and unlike today, the Lugaru, a werewolf or ghost dog that haunted George's childhood memories. If you're not good today, warned his mother, the Lugaru will eat you tonight. From the first Blue Dog painting, Watchdog of 1984, Rodrigue imagined the mythical creature under a dark night sky and within cemeteries and sugarcane fields. It ran wild in the humid Louisiana night air, unlike its model, Tiffany, a family pet, born and transported in a box. Tiffany's first doghouse was a cardboard box, explains George. We brought her home in it, and she liked it as her house, only venturing into the grass after she outgrew the box. Even as I painted the Lugaru, at times my mind drifted to Tiffany, until eventually I created a series of paintings less about a ghost story and more about my dog. Although wont to claim claustrophobia, for George, enclosed spaces, unlike my supports in Tiffany's home, are unpleasant and relate to ill health. This began in his childhood when, while suffering from polio in the early 1950s, he witnessed children, those in more advanced stages of the disease, confined within iron lungs. He talks of it today with anxiety as he faces medical tests or procedures, opting for an open tube whenever possible. First thing they ask you, he says, is what kind of music you want to hear, which doesn't help at all when you're trapped for an hour in a pipe. My advice fails too, as I suggest he close his eyes and imagine those wide open spaces. All I think about are those iron lungs, says George, and my aching arms and back, stuck forever in one position. On his canvas, the idea of a box changed over time as much as the dog. In recent years, both the Lugaru and Tiffany remain, remain mere roots of a series that developed way beyond Cajun country and way beyond family memories. Today, the paintings range from the acutely personal to the universal, but always carefully planned, using shape, color, and design, as though George attacks a puzzle, transferring it from his expansive brain to the space bounded by four sides of a canvas. Tiffany outgrew her box, says George. However, as an artist, the box idea never left me. Each painting begins with a problem, a two-dimensional canvas box that has to be filled and dissected and arranged, eventually becoming a three-dimensional illusion. My yoga practice receives and grows in the same way. Today, I stand half blind and steady outside without my glasses, whether overlooking a valley or standing on a pier. It's when I close my eyes, however, that my supports fail me again, and I'm falling and I'm flailing as though once more out of my box and new to the world. Years ago, after four failed MRI attempts, my Grandma Helen, at her doctor's suggestion, endured my voice throughout her test as I recounted family stories. I guess it was my first speech, as she remained captive for 30 minutes or more, trapped and unable to respond, while I rattled on about holiday plans, George's latest paintings, new growth in our garden, and whatnot. She came through it, relieved, no doubt, to escape my soliloquy as much as the tiny tube. Recently, I shared this memory with George and made the same offer. That's okay, he laughed. I'll make it. Besides, they gave me something for pain, said the blue dog man. And I swear he rolled his eyes. Ironically, George did change his mind. And I used to sit with him in those rooms while he had his MRI. And I would rub his head as his body went through. And then as his body came out the other side, I would rub his feet. Could anything do that again? See you next time.
next time.